Usually when we pick the bark, it's usually a hot, sunny day. The mosquitoes are insane, worse than today. They're, they're, they're just swarming all over the mosquito bark. And it's usually after we need a thunderstorm, a hot, warm day, um, the strawberries, the wild strawberries gotta be ripe. And then uh, we need the birch tree, you know, to, to pick the bark. Um, the sun would be coming from that way. The sun would hit this side of the tree. The sap would be flowing heavier on the sunny side of the tree and a little slower and a little more sluggish on the shady side. But this is actually the shady side is where we cut because it seems to have the most scars. And what we want is birch bark that's clear with no scars on it. To test it, we start off with a, a tea cup. If the bark is gonna strip, this little, this little corner would lift up, but it's not going to it today because of the temperature. No, it's not. It's sticking real tight, so the sap is really tight there. If that T had the corner had lifted up, we would have cut straight down and then across this way. And by the time we're going across this way, this top stuff is peeling off and cracking and separating, and you can hear it. it sounds like a gunshot in the woods. If we had taken the bark off, we would not, it would have come off, we would have laid the bark on the ground for the sap side up and it would start to dry, but we do not touch the tree. We don't touch the sap if we take it. When you take the bark from the tree, you do not touch the tree because that sap there that's under the bark is what protects that tree. And if you disturb the sap, then it could weaken the tree and then insects could get there and land or a disease could land on the tree and hurt it. And we can take pictures of roots. And we can come back in a month, take pictures of those same roots again, and we can look at root growth, root death. And those roots are constantly growing and dying and growing and dying, exploring the soil for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all those nutrients that they need to grow and uh, reproduce. And the anemometer is something that measures wind speed. But this is a three-dimensional sonic anemometer. So this one has no moving parts. It sends a little sound waves between transducers. There's three sets of transducers. And that allows us to get the three-dimensional uh, wind speed and direction. In other words, we get the up and down component of wind as well. But on a sunny day with, with a little bit of horizontal wind, you get what's called eddies. So we're looking at these fluxes of eddies going up and down. We have our tube that's pumping the air down, and the infrared gas analyzer says, what? What do you guess the CO2 level is going to be in that pack of air that's in the leaves going up? It's going to be lower, right, because the leaves have taken up that CO2 in that air packet, and as it goes up, it's lower in CO2. I thought someone once told me that they made some kind of a syrup from birch. Is that true? I, uh, how do you do that, and what is it like, if it's true? I, I uh, was reading in Joel Gibbons' book uh -huh. where he tapped birch trees, but he was talking about the red, like, like the wild cherry birch, uh -huh. and it choked cherries. He was talking about that, not the white birch. Uh, okay. 